Russell Pancoast was a very early architect in the area. Some of the my contemporaries and collaborators have called him the dean of local architects because he established a, a one-man practice very early in his life when he was 27 years old and um, started doing a lot of the very early Mediterranean houses on Miami Beach. He began in the early 30s to do some work like the Bass Museum did, and I believe he started the design of that in 1929. So that was that was pretty early, and uh, you might characterize it as a federal Art Deco. Uh, there's another building in that same style on Miami Beach, the old post office, which I would consider to be sort of in the same federal Deco style. That's what some architectural historians have called it. And then uh, after that he did an occasional Art Deco building and, and, and began to streamline his work more and more. But he actually fell out of favor with Mediterranean style, uh, not so much because of commercial pressure to do more Art Deco buildings, but because of his own investigation into the local climate here. He discovered that his Mediterranean buildings weren't working very well. Um, and he needed overhangs over the windows, which, uh, you know, let's face it, the Arc Deco buildings have the eyebrows over the windows, and, and I think you talk about tropical deco, that is a response to the climate. It's tropical deco because the real commercial potential that people have seen for it is for the Art Deco to capture the spirit of unique regionalism that we have here. We're a very unique urban uh, area in terms of climate. We're the only subtropical city in the United States of America. Most of the other architects were trained in the Northeast in New York. Uh, I saw some of the schools that they attended were technical schools in, in New York. Um, some of them went to Pratt Institute, uh, uh, Columbia, some of the Ivy League schools, but uh, mostly, mostly more technically oriented. Some of them were more builders and contractors and and sort of engineers and uh, really kind of the can-do people and, and, and somehow they got inspired to do the artistry on top of their engineering ability. Uh, particularly Henry Hohauser who would have to be called the most prolific of all the Miami Beach deco architects. He had a shop of about, uh, I believe there were 20 to 25 people in the office. He would run double shifts. He literally would have people working every night in his office. And um, he had probably eight or ten buildings under design at any one time. Mr. Hohauser was the one who was able to get in there and put the artwork on it, and some of which actually then became quite original for his... Uh, grill work, metal grill work. <laughs> 